Hi, Lars Christensen here. All right, so this is the fourth uh, video and the last video where we're looking at Inventor HSM Express, the free two and a half axis cam that runs right inside uh, of Inventor. So if you go to cam.autodesk.com, right above my head here, you can go out and download this. And like I said, Autodesk gives this away for free. Not only that, they actually also have a great forum where you can get a bunch of help and a great uh, you know, YouTube channel and, and all these things. Plus the post processors are actually supported by Autodesk too. So this is the full way for you to get in and, and, and work with this. Now, if you are just dropping, in, dropping into this video, uh, we are kind of like taking it a little slow in the matter that there's a lot of how-to videos out on YouTube. We also trying to do a little bit of the why. So not just the button clicks, but also talk a little bit about why we are doing uh, certain things. Now, if you are just jumping in, here is the link to uh, the first video. So you can, you know, just stop there. You don't have to go out and look for it. And don't forget the subscribe button. Uh, you know, really appreciate if you take the time to click on that, make sure you're getting all the videos that we have. So let me just show you what we have, what we've gotten so far on the screen here with uh, this Inventor Express. So, so far we have kind of like machined the first operation of this uh, throttle pedal here. And remember that I put this inside of assembly so I can kind of like look at it. And we, we faced it off, we roughed it out, we did the, the finishing tool paths, and you can go through the other videos if you want to kind of like, uh, you know, see how we did all the different steps. What we have to do now is we actually, we have, we have finished machining the whole top of it, but now we need to flip it over and then we need to um, actually dress off just one operation facing off the all the bottom stock of it. So if I just go in here and I hit on the setup and let me go over to the simulation here. Uh, and if I just on in the bottom here, hover over to the bottom, you can kind of like see where we, we ended up here. So we machined all this out and now we have this piece of material that we're holding on to and we're going to have to flip it around. Now, this part is in a little bit of an odd shape, right? So when we're flipping this one over, it's going to be a little bit hard to, um, to hold on to. Well, this is one of the great things about being inside of a program like Inventor. Because what I used to do is I would actually buy some 6061 aluminum, um, and then I would machine it into the same kind of size, maybe a little bit thicker than the, the vice jaws we have here. Now, vice jaws on a vice like this, uh, just have two counter um, uh, bore holes in them where you fasten, you tighten them in. So as you can see the through holes right here, uh, you can tighten them in. So I used to machine my own, what we call soft jaws, aluminum jaws. So I would like, you can buy them, but I mean, I'm cheap. So I would like go out and buy maybe, you know, 10 uh, of these blocks, uh, 6061, or like a long bar and then saw it to size and machine um, jaws out of aluminum. What I then could do was I could take these two steel jaws you see here on the vise, take them off and put a couple of the aluminum uh, that I had machined on, and then I could actually machine this shape that I have here right inside of those so I could hold it securely. Kind of like almost like doing a Boolean operation of, of redraw or uh, pulling out, you know, the match of this here. So that's kind of like an inventor uh, job, not so much as a cam. But this is the nice thing about being inside of Inventor is that you can now take these custom jaws that you draw up and you could now subtract, you know, this shape off here. And this could definitely be another video showing how we do that. Um, and then you could machine the jaws right inside of the vise. And now this part will fit right nicely into that. So that's definitely uh, something to check out. Now, what I'm going to do here uh, while I'm in here is I'm actually to machine the second operation. I'm actually going to go over to the inventor side of everything. So if you click up here, I can switch back to the model. So in here you can see, you know, that we have uh, everything in here. And now what I can just do uh, in here is I can actually just right click, right? And then I can just go down and say, I'm gonna turn the visibility off here. Uh, so I can take that off and I can also just do the same thing uh, with the parallels in here. So now what I have is really just the part. So I turned everything off. So that makes it a little bit easier for me uh, when I go back over to the cam here to machine the backside. So we got our place 
that setup. We got to create a new setup for the second operation uh, right in here. So really what we're going to do in the real world is we're going to flip the part over something like this. We're going to machine our jaws um, and then we're going to go ahead and and, um, and put the part in the vise. But I'm going to just do the second operation here. I'm not going to go through all of that. So the reason that I wanted to wait with the setup till the last thing to show you were, first of all, because I wanted to, you to see how easy it is really to just go through the step inside of Inventor HSM. And also when it comes to doing the setup, then we got to kind of like take a couple of things into consideration. Because what a job setup does, and it's not really hard to set up in the software, but I just wanted to kind of like get to this point. We are saying to the CAM software, how we have things out of the machine. And what I mean by that is that if you're standing in front of your machine right now and you open up the doors and you're looking in, you will have the table in there. Now on the table, we have that vice clamp down. And what we're using in here, of course, we're using a coordinate system, meaning that we are going in X, Y, and Z direction. So normally you will have X going this way, Y is going along where you're standing and then the z axis will go up and down okay so that's kind of like how that works now what we have to do with the job setup is that we have to tell uh, the cam software how our part is sitting inside the machine and how we're going to locate it inside of the machine see at the machine things are pretty established um, you know that X is going this way and Y is going this way. You can't really just change that. But in the CAM, we have some flexibility. So really what we're going to do with the job setup, here's my Kleenex tissue box, is we're going to tell, first of all, we're going to tell the CAM software, is our part sitting like this or is it sitting like this? Okay, so we will do that with either an X and a Y. And what we are using on the, the, the CAM software is like a 3D gnomon is called, or free axis. And I have kind of like a 3D modeled one here. Okay, so you can kind of like use this one to say where are we gonna, how are we gonna place the parts. So in our case here, we kind of like have the stock sitting like this. And then we have in regards to the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. But then on top of that, we're going to tell the machine uh, where it's sitting out on the machine. So is it sitting over in one corner or the other corner? We do that by setting a work coordinate system uh, out on the machine. So we're going to actually go out to the machine and we're going to tell, we're going to pick up the part. And that's where all the coordinates are going to come from, your, from the zero, zero. So out of the machine, you're going to put the part in the vise and then you're going to say where you're going to pick it up. Now, in our first operation, I picked it up in the upper, uh, for me, where I am, I picked it up in the upper uh, uh, left, okay? So, depending on if you're looking at me, it was kind of like sitting in the screen like this. And that means where those X, Y, and C is going. Most machines, many machines, we call this G54. So, if you're ever talking to somebody else, where is our pickup point G54? And you will normally use like an etch finder. That's a kind of like a cheap version to that. It's called an etch, etch finder. It's like this little thing you can go into an etch and you can zero in on your part. And then you can say that this is the top corner that I'm going to machine from. That's really what we're going to say here. Now, what we did on our part in the first operation was, remember that we drilled some holes for some counterboards and then there was the big bore that we actually machined out. We could actually use that one as our pickup point because we flipped it over. So we actually know where that hole is and we could actually pick up that hole and say, all right, this is where for the second operation we're going to start from. Okay. So in the first operation, we just picked up the corner for the second operation. We're going to pick up that hole, but it's going to be the same, um, same way. So let me just show you on the screen here. And don't forget, if this is a little confusing. Rewind back and uh, and watch it again, right? Because it's, it's not really that hard. It's just a lot of different steps going on. So let's take a look at the screen. So again here, we, we're looking at our part and you can see that our old setup, we had it down here in the lower left corner, but I flipped it over, of course. So I have a hole going through uh, through here that I can now I can now pick up. So the way I will do that is I will go to a job setup. And when you go into a job setup, 
it's really the easiest thing is to start from the top and work your way down. So milling is the first one because we can also do turning inside of here, not in the express version, but if you have the full package like I have here. And then you can go in here, you can say model orientation. How are you going to select things? This is where we determine what is up and down with that X, Y, Z coordinates. I, there are some different options in here. I always use C axis and then plane and, and X axis. So I'm just going to select that one. And then I'm going to go um, over here. Now you will see that the box is actually um, bigger. That's because it sees our whole assembly. If we just click model here and select our model, you will see that the box becomes a lot smaller. We're saying here what we actually want to machine. So back to this over here, the, this up here, the select Z axis. When you that selected, the first tab here will say what is your Z axis and it's perpendicular to the face you select. So I'm just going to select this top face. And as soon as I do that, you will see that this nomen type uh, that was like the white thing I had before, how that is pointing with the different axis. So depending on what you want it to look like. Now I want to specify the Z, the X axis, sorry. I want it to run, make sure that it runs along this X, uh, this axis here. So I'm just going to select the X axis and then I'm going to go over and select along this edge right here. And that will assure that it goes that way. However, um, I don't want my Y axis to go this way. I want it to go the other way. So look at this. I can just flip the axis just like that. And now I have flipped it here. So now I have just determined how is the part on my Kleenex box sitting out at my stock out of the machine. The next thing I got to say is where am I picking up the part? And I wanted to pick up that hole, right? So I want to pick up this edge here. So I'm just going to go over here and select that. And I can actually select the point if you want to. Right, you can see you get a bunch of different options. So I'm just going to go over and I'm going to select that ads right there. And now you will see that that is sitting right there. That's really how you set this up. Now the next tab over here will give you your stock. Okay, so in here you have a bunch of different options to how you want to use your stock. Uh, set up your stock in here, depending on, you know, if it's cast things and, and other things. So that's just something for you to be aware of that you, you can control how the stock looks like. We're not going to worry about it for just doing this right now. I just really wanted to show you how to set uh, that setup uh, right here. So let me just go ahead and hit OK. And we will see that now we have set up to uh, right in here. Now you saw on the first video how we did a facing operation. I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to go in here and hit click facing operation. And of course, as always, I'm going to select my, my tool. I'm going to select the same 50 millimeter face mill I did uh, in the first video. And I'm going to hit OK to that. And again, I don't have to select any geometry because it knows uh, what the part is. I'm just going to hit OK here. And uh, that will actually create uh, that tool path for us right here. So now we have actually created the entire uh, machining, this entire part. If I go into to simulate here, we will actually be able to see, um, if I just, I can hold on control and select these two setups here, then we will actually see all the different operations uh, that, we, that we created to machine this part through this full video series. So we phased off the part, Right, and we faced that off. That was nice. Then we did the whole um, the adaptive clearing that you definitely need to check out. Like I said in the video, if you are already an experienced machinist, you gotta check out this adaptive clearing. It's awesome. We machined around the outside of the part to just make it finished. Right, and I'll show you how you could change the lead in and lead out. We did a little shelf here. Maybe I should add one more finishing cut here just to make sure that little tab don't stay up there. We spotted it, we drilled, we bored out uh, the, the part here, and then we did a, little, a couple of pockets. And then in the end, down here, we are actually going to, to, fin to finish this part off um, by just facing off uh, this throttle pedal here. And again, like I showed in the first video, anytime you want to post something out, you can click on the operation. You can hit the post processing tab up here and you can select any of these generic posts. Again, Autodesk will help you. If you, if you don't see your machine in here, you can go out and uh, Autodesk will actually help you 
with a post uh, in here. So you can go and post that out. So I'm gonna wrap up this fall video series here. Um, hope that this job setup made some sense. Maybe just go back and, 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 and see through it again. It's fairly easy to work with. You just gotta think of it in that content. That the first thing we gotta do is, we gotta tell what are we gonna machine, how is it sitting out in that machine? How do we want it to sit up? And then with this G54, whatever, your machine manual uh, calls that. If you just look up your machine manual for a work offset, it will show you how to set it up um, and where we, we decide we are gonna have that zero zero coming from. That's where all your code will come from wherever you set that, your X, Y, and Z coordinates will come from that. And then really just hit, hit that, uh, that post button. So I hope you found this little series helpful. Again, Inventor HSM Express, cam.autos.com, that's where you can download it. It's entire free, you just need a seat of Inventor so you can play around with it. It's really easy and high quality uh, machining for that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Appreciate it, hope you find it helpful. Until the next time, have an awesome day.